Welcome to two-dimensional arrays. The arrays we've looked at so far have all been one-dimensional arrays because they store a simple list of values. A two-dimensional array has values in two dimensions, which are like the rows and columns of a table or a grid. Many board games are based on a grid, such as checkers, chess, or scrabble. Many apps are based on grids too. Candy Crush, 2048, Ruzel, you can probably think of some others. Two-dimensional arrays are a very common topic on the free response section of the AP test. A one-dimensional array stores a list of elements, whereas a two-dimensional array can be thought of as a table of elements with both rows and columns. A two-dimensional array is an array of arrays in Java. A two-dimensional array can be declared by specifying the size of each dimension separately. For example, right here we're declaring a, an integer 2D array called sumNums. You'll notice we had to use two array operators in the declaration. We use the assignment operator followed by the new keyword, and it is a new int 2D array that contains three rows, four columns. If you do not provide values for the elements, the values default to zero. You can initialize the array via assignment. For example, right here, we've got the value 14 that we're going to store in the sum nums to the array at position row 0, column 0. When you know the values that you want to store in the 2D array in advance, you can declare the array and then store the values in it immediately. This operation is just like what you do for a one-dimensional array. Two pairs of brackets are used to tell the computer that it's not a regular array. Or, or regular variable, sorry. Every cell in the 2D array is assigned a pair of coordinates that are based on the row number and the column number. The first pair of brackets represents the row number, and the second pair of brackets represents the column number. The rows and columns are both begin at zero and end with one less than the number of rows or columns. A two-dimensional array is referenced using two index values. For example, right here, we've got some nums 3, 2. That means whatever element is at index position row 3, column 2, will be stored in the value variable. A two-dimensional array can also be passed to a method. For example, on the screen here, we've got public void display scores, and then the parameter of the display score method is a 2D int array, and the formal name of the parameter is scores array. With 2D arrays, the length field holds the number of rows in the array. Each row, in turn, has a length field that holds the number of columns in that particular row. For example, sumNums.length would return the number of rows in the sumNums array, whereas sumNum, int, I'm sorry, array operator 0.length would return the number of columns in the first row of the sumNum array because you're using index position 0. If we used index position 1, then we would get the number of columns that was in the second row. You can create what's known as jagged or ragged arrays in Java. In 2D arrays, each row is a separate array. You can declare each row to have a different length, creating a jagged or ragged array. Declaring a jagged array would look something like this. We've got, for example, we've got a double 2D array called sales, and we're using the assignment operator in the new keyword, and it's a new double, and it's going to have four rows, but we haven't told it how many columns it's going to have. This statement declares an array with four rows, but the rows are not yet created. Let's take a look at some examples. The 2D array program that you see on the screen right here initiates a two-dimensional array of integers. The size of the dimensions is specified when the array is created. In this case, the array is five rows by 10 columns. Nested for loops are used to fill the array with values and to print them in the table. Carefully trace the processing to see how the nested loops visit each element in the two-dimensional array. Note that the outer loops are governed by the table.length, which is the number of rows, and the inner loops are governed by table and then we've got the array operator with row to indicate which row we're on, dot length, which is the number of columns in that row. Please pause the video if you need more time to study the code. Here is the output of the two-dimensional array. The combination of print and the escape sequence T allows the printout to be in multiple columns. 
Let's take a look at another example. As with one-dimensional arrays, an initializer list can be used to instantiate a two-dimensional array, where each element is itself an array initializer list. This technique is used on the SODA survey program shown here. Suppose a soda company has a taste test for four new flavors to see how teens like them. The company got 10 students to try each new flavor and gave it a score from 1 to 5, where 1 means gross and 5 means awesome. The 2D array called scores in the soda survey program stores the results of that survey. Each row is a soda, and each column in that row is the student who tested it or tasted it. More generally, each row holds the responses that all students gave or one particular soda flavor, and each column holds the responses of one student for all soda. The soda survey program computes and prints the average responses for each soda and each student. The sums of each soda and students are first stored in a 1D array of integers. Then the averages are computed and printed. Remember that although the data is integers, the for loop used for the math are being casted um, to integers, are being casted from integers to double, so a double can be outputted. Pause the video if you need more time to study the code. This is what the output of the SODA survey program looks like. 